beautiful hills of Western Maryland in Frederick. Do you also say Frederick? No. Frederick. You're putting me on. It is Frederick. Frederick, Maryland. And we're going to take you on a beautiful trip around this golf destination that's affordable and upscale on the new episode of The Traveling Golfer. American owned, family operated. Since 1829, no bull, just lager from America's oldest brewery, Yingling. One of the best things about a golf trip to Frederick, Maryland, once you get here, everything is so convenient. We're staying at the Best Western Historic Frederick, so close to the attractions downtown, and all of the great golf courses, including this gem, Worthington Manor, shaped in the hills of Frederick County by the design team of Alt and Clark. They're famous for solid golf courses. You'll see what I mean. Ed Coyle, general manager, head professional at Worthington Manor Golf Club. Ed, you are here from the beginning of the golf course, but not quite from the beginning of the manor itself. This beautiful piece of property has a bit of history to it. Can you tell us a little bit about the pre-golf course history? Sure, it's named Worthington Manor because of the Worthington family. They built one of their homes here in the 1850s, just before the Civil War. And over the course of about 150 years, just three families lived here. And then it became a championship golf course one day. Yeah. And it's beautiful. It certainly is. Being part of the course from day one, even before it opened with the Alton Clark crew here, you've got to see this property mature, the golf course mature into a championship course that's held a lot of events. Tell us a little bit about that history. Yeah, we're the only course in Maryland to hold every male USGA qualifier. We've had nine US Open qualifiers, and then we've also had the amateur, the senior open and such. And just over time, it's just progressed. Like after 18 years, it has really reached a point where it is uh, top level. Conditions are beautiful on the golf course. The greens especially beautiful. Obviously, there's a good bit of elevation change on the golf course. It adds a bit of a challenge to the course for the general public course player, uh, but they're able to handle it pretty well. Yeah, the, the one thing about here is you, you really find your golf ball. I mean, in fact, people will come here and go, oh, it's really open. Kind of, we'll call it Scottish or Lynx type. You have a lot of natural areas, native grass areas, but they're not right on top of the golfer. They aren't. Over the years, we've kind of redesigned some things, cut back some stuff, grown up some stuff, but we, we do make it so that it's not real penal. It's not right on the fairway. And we also have a nice local rule on the scorecard. Anything that's over four inches in height is a lateral hazard. You may play it that way. Mm. Not in tournaments, but for public play, yes. And for those who like to find their golf ball, Worthington Manor's the place because, Ed, you know, Looking for your golf balls, the second least favorite thing for golfers. You know what number one is? Don't. Looking for somebody else's golf ball. You generally find your golf ball off the drive. The difficulty of this golf course is from 100 yards in and around the greens. And most importantly, you, you just don't get a flat lie in a lot of spots. So that's the challenge. Ed, the bunkering on this golf course is really prominent, beautiful, but not overly penal. No, not at all. There's 68 bunkers on the golf course, and most of them, from fairway to green, it's a standard bunker shot. You can even hit uh, hybrids or fairway woods and advance it up toward the green, and around the green you don't have to hit that high lofted shot, except for a couple of occasions you do. But pretty much, yeah, it's, a, it's just a standard bunker shot. The aesthetics of the bunkers at this golf course are top notch. Steve Miller, head golf professional at Maryland National Golf Club. Another piece of work in the Frederick, Maryland area. Steve, 
you've been here from the beginning. I have, yeah. Seen it from its infancy. It's been great. Yeah, you must have been a little kid then. <laughs> That's right. Not my infancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Arthur Hill's design, obviously he has done many renowned golf courses across America. Somebody who really had a reputation. What do we see here from him? Well, from the Arthur Hills golf courses that I've had a chance to play in my lifetime, it's very indicative of what he does. It's very typical Arthur Hills, a lot of mounding, a lot of links flair to the golf course, a lot of target golf. Not terribly penal on the greens themselves, but uh, just ball strikers type golf course. Yeah. This piece of property, obviously a lot of elevation change. What did he do to make it playable so that the daily fee golfer can get around the course. Well, we do have five sets of tee boxes, and uh, the, the yardage, if you're looking at the scorecard, it's not terribly long. It's only just over 6,800 yards for the back tees, but we have a lot of short par fours out here, which really takes driver out of your hands. And there's a nice balance to the par fours on this course. Yeah, really uh, throughout the golf course. Arthur Hills on his longer holes, he's left a lot of room to miss left or right, and uh, some forgiveness around the greens. However, on some of the shorter holes, par fives, par threes, and par fours, it's going to require a little more accuracy, a little more uh, course management off the tee and sometimes from the fairway as well, making sure you avoid those hazards. Fairly typical of what I was talking about is just hole number 16, very short par four, only about 300 yards from the longest set of tees. However, there's a variety of ways to play the hole. We have a creek that runs through there. You can hit anywhere from nine iron off the tee or you can give it a go with a driver. Either way you can make birdie, either way you can make a big number. <laughs> and of course, some forced carries. He always puts some challenge in there. <laughs> And we see a lot of fescue outlining the holes of the course, adding some beauty to it far enough away so that it's not an, an impedance on the uh, golfers. Well, certainly uh, <laughs> it's there. Myself included, had to play a lot of shots out of that beautiful tall fescue. But uh, yeah, for the most part, we've, we keep it off to the sides and we try to keep it out of play as much as possible. Yeah. But eh, like uh, any place, if you're going to be wayward with your tee shot, you're bound to be penalized to a certain extent. We also feature five fantastic par threes, which is just naturally going to shorten the overall length of the golf course as well. Now I understand the five beautiful par threes, four of them are downhill, maybe not quite as downhill as this right. 17, but that always adds to the beauty. Absolutely. Yeah. Anytime you've got a par three and really any kind of approach shot where you can see the pin and see where you're aiming uh, and see where it is on the green, it really uh, helps the golfer's eye for sure. Just as we see here on uh, number 17. So this is uh, what we consider to be our signature hole on number 17. It's the hole that you'll see on our scorecard. Well, enough talking about it. Let's see if one of us can make it too. All right. You want to take a little less club than you ordinarily would for the scorecard? Go ahead and take one club less. There's a lot of tough shots in golf. This is our latest generation Ironwood. It's called the Hot Launch Series. As a leader in hybrid technology since they first came on the golf scene, this design combines a hollow hyper steel body with a forged super thin steel face for more distance. The Hot Launch Ironwoods are available individually if you want to utilize them more like a hybrid. But the really great thing about these irons is they're also available in a full set. These are really the most forgiving set of irons you can ever play. The head design is progressive, so they get thinner as you get down to the shorter irons. The longer irons are a little bit wider sold, which makes them easy to hit from the rough. These new ironwoods make a hole like this not so hard at all. We're at Musket Ridge Golf Club, Myersville, Maryland, just west of Frederick, South Mountain behind us, Dave Freeze, head professional to my left. Dave. Yes, Tony. This spot right here on the patio outside of Catoctin <coughs> Hall, where you do your banquets and weddings, it looks like a place I could spend a lot of time analyzing my golf game after a round out on this beautiful golf course. 
Yeah, Tony, it's correct. Um, as you can see, you got a beautiful view of the golf course behind you. Uh, you got the wonderful ceremony site down here, our, our short game area, and it's a great hangout uh, for the weddings and events. So it's a very popular spot. Joe Lee designed this golf course. He did some incredible work that sort of flies under the radar of a lot of people with regard to golf course architecture. Uh, this is a great example of him fitting a golf course into what probably is a little bit of a different piece of property to build on. Joe Lee is quoted as saying that this is the best piece of property he's ever had the privilege of working on. Joe Lee, of course, did a lot of his work in Florida. Mm -hmm. So this kind of topography, quite different, but he handled it well. Yeah, all of his routing was across all the existing ridge lines. There's probably over 200 feet of elevation throughout the golf course. It's a very playable golf course for all skill levels, a variety of risk reward holes, very few force carries, and no blind shots. The term they often use in golf course architecture is <clears throat> ribboning the fairways through all of this elevation change so <clears throat> that you don't have all of those side hill lies. And he really did a great job here, and I think you can see that just by looking out at yeah, some did. of these holes right here. I've heard tell of a scoring zone on this course. I haven't personally experienced it yet. Maybe one of these days I'll score well through there, but what are we talking about? That would be holes 10, 11, 12, Tony. It's a par five, a short par four, and then another par five. I've had many rounds saved through those golf holes. You can eagle number 10 if you're having a good day. You can definitely birdie number 11, a short par four, and then eagle on number 12 is definitely a possibility. So if you're having a good day, you're a good player, very easily to go five under on those three holes. We're with the artist responsible for this beautiful canvas behind us, a green lush canvas, Vince DiStefano, superintendent at Musket Ridge. Vince, you do a great job <laughs> out here. This place is great condition and beautiful. Yes, we, uh, we try to keep the, the environment in, in mind at all times and provide the golfer with the, the best conditions possible. Joe Lee did a great job with a very severe piece of property by ribboning fairways through the property. Because the, the fairways are mostly level, the conditioning is, is very good. The fairways play very smooth and you get a good roll out there and a good hitting surface. We talked a lot about the fairways, but these greens are absolutely perfect. The bent grass up here uh, at this elevation in Maryland is a great climate for them. So anytime the golfers come out here to play, they'll expect to see the greens in, in great condition. You also uh, worked at a couple of pretty good locations in the past. During uh, my assistant career, uh, I worked at uh, Shadow Creek in Las Vegas and Spyglass Hill with the Pebble Beach Company. And you grew up at? And I grew up in Rochester, New York, and worked at Oak Hill Country Club. Yeah, they're pr three pretty good names. <laughs> Bring them out here to Musket Ridge. Dave, tell me a little <laughs> bit about the history of the course since it opened in 2001, how it matured and how it's been received by the golf community, events, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we get a lot of local play, but we're, we're very proud that we also get you know people driving from all over to play here. As far as Pittsburgh, Philly, New Jersey, Virginia, it's great golf course condition. We've hosted numerous uh, events. The uh, Mid-Atlantic PGA Section Championship back in our early days, I think it was 2003. We've hosted an LPGA Symmetra Tour event, the Challenge at Musket Ridge back in 2012. We have multiple Senior Open qualifiers here. For the locals, and even not so locals, you have a unique membership. We do. We have a thing called the Blue-Gray membership. Um, it is a it's an associate membership where you pay a you pay a rate. You're a membership. You're a member for a year. You get uh, discounted rates. You get a free round of golf. Uh, you get uh, early twilight. Uh, but most importantly, you know, we get creative. We give you uh, monthly bonus certificates. You know, some examples would be a buy one get one. We're really proud that we created the uh, country club for a day feeling here at Musket Ridge. A lot of public golf courses tend to say that, but we feel we kind of mastered that with this Blue Gray membership. Uh, yeah, I think you mastered it all right. You yeah. have how many members? Uh, over 800. So, so 800 it's members. People come to Musket Ridge, they love the golf course, and they come back. The food and beverage operation here is impressive, to say the least. And I know that you approach it in a little bit of a different way. Uh, Tony, we do. We're actually, we're very proud of it. We're the very first zero food waste facility, golf facility in the United States. 
Now, some of the friends I have, trust me, there is never any food waste when whatever comes in front of them. <laughs> yes. But I know there is some other cases, so. Yeah, uh, we hold a lot of events. So all the food scraps from the uh, weddings, events, uh, from the kitchen, and from our bar area are all composted. And the fertilizer that is left is used to, uh, we have an organic garden up over the hill there where the chef grows vegetables and, and herbs. We estimate that we divert around four tons of waste from landfills each year. with Chris Moore, the Frederick Golf Guy, bringing golfers from all over the country to this beautiful piece of Western Maryland, the hills, the golf courses. Chris, it's a real labor of love that you have here. It certainly is, Tony, because I'm a golfer and I really, uh, uh, when I first went into this business and started packaging back in 2004, uh, all these courses were new. This is when uh, uh, six, premium golf courses just dumped down right in the middle of Frederick County during that boom. Uh, been doing it since that time and I'll tell you people come here and they come back because these courses are just special. Well you've combined very high quality golf with very affordable rates and I know you put together some packages that stun me when I hear about them. Yeah I mean the three courses that we're at this week Tony which is Worthington Manor Musket Ridge and Maryland National. Uh, weekdays, uh, staying at the Best Western, I can do it for around $300 and maybe about $330, $340 uh, on a weekend. You know, Tony, I've taken a little bit of a different approach to packaging. I literally spend time with every one of the groups that comes in town. I meet them at the golf course the day they arrive and then I make arrangements to meet them at a local watering hole and first round's on me. I like that one. How about with regard to the entire area itself? You have a number of golf courses that are all in the upscale range, mm -hmm. uh, so it provides enough variety for the golfers when they come in. It, it really does, and, and what I do is I, I use hotels that are in Frederick. Best Western is one of them. I use a number of other hotels as well, too. Uh, they're all within about 10 or 15 minutes of the golf courses, but more important within 10 minutes of these golf courses is probably 100 restaurants and bars. Just a, a, a great place for a little quick vacation and it's only about two and a half hours away from Philadelphia it's uh, three and a half hours away from Pittsburgh so very close get away from that 10-hour trip down to Myrtle Beach and being able to have so many options for after golf is what I really sell personal service uh, I'm able to make recommendations and every uh, group that comes in uh, gets a, a gift card to one of the restaurants that I partner up with of their choice to, uh, to go for one of the nights that they're here. Looking for another attraction in Frederick? How about minor league baseball? We're at Harry Grove Stadium, home of the Frederick Keys, single A minor league affiliate of the Baltimore Orioles. And this stadium has a favorite song, like all baseball stadiums, the Star Spangled Banner, written by Frederick native Francis Scott Key, who's buried right next door. We're with Jack Spindler, host at the Frederick County Visitors Center. Jack, you really have a beautiful office here. Thank you. This is actually an old warehouse built in 1899 that four years ago we transformed into our city and county visitor center. Extremely entertaining and informative. I'm going to guess you get quite a few visitors through here every year? Approximately 25,000 visitors come through here. And not just um, East Coast, but all across America and from all around the world. Frederick has a small town feel to it, but I was really surprised to find out that it's the second largest city in Maryland? That's right. We have a, uh, just under 70,000 residents, uh, according to the recent census. And within our historic district, which is 50 square blocks, there is so much to see and do. And what's your favorite part to tell them about Frederick County? I like to tell them that Frederick's a great combination of the modern and contemporary. We have a beautiful city park coming right through the city of Carroll Creek Park. And then we also have um, you know, great restaurants. People would come out here from Baltimore and Washington uh, just for the restaurants. But of course, we have lots of history here, dating back to the Civil War, of course, but even earlier than that, War of 1812. This is Francis Scott Key's hometown. 
And when he wrote that in 1814, uh, immediately became a very popular patriotic song. Didn't become our nation's national anthem until 1931. Frederick County, of course, home to a lot of golf. Uh, are you able to direct people to some of the golf in Frederick County when they come to the uh, visitor center? We do. We have a visitor guide that shows where uh, approximately uh, 11 or 12 uh, golf courses are in Frederick. And people ask about that and we direct them in, in the various parts of the county where these beautiful courses are laid out. I've heard say that the old section of Frederick is really a walking tour. Do you have a mapped out walking tour for people? We do. Uh, because we get that question so often, uh, we've developed a self-guided walking tour. It's about a mile long in distance, and most people takes about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes to walk our self-guided walking tour. The hills are alive with the sound of golf. That's the song of Frederick, Maryland. Everywhere we went this week, we were met with spectacular vistas, great golf courses, and the scenic mountains that surround this entire area in Western Maryland. We'd like to say thanks to the courses we visited and a special thanks to the Frederick Golf Guy, Chris Moore, who helped put this all together. Traveling Golfer enjoys taking you to the many golf meccas of the world, and maybe to a brand new one like Frederick, Maryland. Hope you enjoyed this trip with the Traveling Golfer. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Tourage is the official equipment sponsor of the Traveling Golfer.